Boy, is it nice to see the sunshine. It's early May and at Wishwell Farms, that means it's tomato picking time. As you can see, we've got red ripe tomatoes to pick today. And they look really nice. And there's the beehive. The bees have been active. They love these sunny days too. Let's take a peek. Gotta be careful. I don't want those soldier bees to come out and attack me. There's not too many in there today. They're out flying around, doing their job. All right, let's get these tomatoes picked. Wow, just look at these beauties. My goodness, they're so beautiful. Now, early in the season, the calyxes tend to stay on the tomatoes. We don't like them to be on there because there's too much risk of them poking other tomatoes during the picking and packing process. But uh, early in the season, they're hard to get off. Sometimes you damage the tomatoes trying to get them off, so we just leave them on. Uh, oh, maybe for the first few weeks. Now, once we get to June and July, they'll almost always pop off and stay on the plant. And if they don't, they're easy to pop off. And then there's no chance of them getting damaged during the picking and packing process. All right, after we pull our tomatoes off of the vine, we bring them up here to these yellow tubs that are inside a wheelbarrow. We're gonna set them in there upside down. And then the second layer, we will set upside right. That way the calyx or the stem there cannot poke any of the tomatoes. And then we'll put a partial third layer in there just to fill in all the gaps. You can see I got one tub filled up already down here. Look at those beauties. Oh man. Customers at the farmer's markets are gonna love these. Now today's pick is not gonna be a very big one. It's the first pick of the year. It's May 6th. Um, they'll ramp up slowly for a couple weeks. By the third or fourth week of May, uh, they'll be producing pretty heavily and then by then our second greenhouse will also start to produce and by the first week of June we should be picking 100 boxes or so if not more every other day and we need that many for our sales on Saturdays alone we need over 200 boxes just to fulfill and satisfy the demand at our farmers markets so all right let's get these things picked and then we'll get them in the barn and get them packed into boxes I know some of you watching this love your fried green tomatoes. I don't like to pick them green just because we never have enough red ones as it is. So if a green one happens to fall off the plant onto the ground while working on the plants each week, we will pick them up and pack them alongside the red ones because there's always a handful of people at the farmer's markets that want green ones. Now I often get the question when I'm showing my tomatoes being harvested, why do we pick them so light? Why don't we let them get completely dark red, ripe, and ready to eat? There are several reasons for this. First of all, they're very tender. The skin is very soft and tender if you let them ripen to full maturity on the plant during harv for harvesting. And there's a good chance there's going to be a scratch or a ding or a dent on the tomato by the time it gets picked from the plant, from the time that it gets put in the box. Because we're putting them in these totes here you know those sharp angles that they can get uh, poked on the stems the calyx of the tomato can poke, puncture and poke other tomatoes and then the employees fingernails their fingers from popping off the calyx there's just a whole array of things that can happen to this tomato if we wait till it's completely red so this is the color we like to pick them you know it's uh it's not red red but it's not yellow or light you know i don't know what you call that light orange and reason number two that we pick them a little on the light side is flavor now i think there's a little bit of a misconception out there about what gives tomato a tomato its flavor obviously good growing practices and feeding them the right nutrients and fertilizers has a lot to do with it but even more so than that it's sunlight 
So the, the tomatoes you're buying in a grocery store during the winter time often have very little tomato flavor and can even taste like cardboard because they're grown under artificial light. Most growers are using LED lights now. That's just not the same as this beautiful, glorious 75, 80 degree sunshine that we have today. That's what improves the tomato flavor. And leaving them on the vine till full maturity or you know completely red is not always what's going to give them the most flavor. It's having longer days and more sunshine. So um, by leaving them on there till they're orange, we feel like we're kind of uh, splitting the difference, you know. We're letting them mature on the plant a little bit longer than what a commercial tomato grower would do because they're picking them at breaker color. Right when that tomato is showing any hint of color, they're being harvested. So the next ones will continue to ripen, come on quicker and sooner. So that's another reason we do it. If we left that thing on there till it was completely red and soft, um, it's going to hold up the maturity of the following tomatoes after it. So we wait till they're kind of an orange color, not too light, not too dark, if that makes sense. Alright, first two tubs of tomatoes for the year. They look amazing. Once we get rolling into the heart of the season, end of May, early June, we will be picking approximately 30 tubs every other day. And that usually provides us with what we need through most of June. Then the greenhouses will kind of go through a little bit of a slump because they've been picked so hard. And that's why we stagger our planting. So when one greenhouse is going down, another one's starting and coming up. So that usually provides us with what we need until we get close to July. That's when we're getting close to sweet corn season, 4th of July, holiday. You know, people are ready for more produce. More people are coming out to the farmer's markets and we often won't have enough. Now, the farmer's markets I attend, I can only sell what I grow. So all my tomatoes I grow here at a farm are designated to go to farmer's markets. And if I'm short on tomatoes, I will buy locally sourced uh, tomatoes from some of the Amish up the road and I can sell those at other retail stands that are mine where I lease a corner parking lot with a trailer for example. Um, I will often use the Amish tomatoes for selling there and at our roadside stand here on our home farm anywhere where it's not a uh, like a certified farmers market where you're required to sell only what you grow. If you're curious each plant is capable of producing 40 to 50 pounds. Uh, we cut our growing season short. You know, we're starting a little bit late. A lot of people start picking in March or April because they start their plants earlier. Uh, so we're losing about a month there on the on the front end. And then we pull our plants out uh, by mid-August, end of August. Once our field tomatoes are coming on strong, I really don't need these that much. And it gets to be a hassle because it's hot in there. I don't want to put shade cloth on my greenhouse. My employees are busy picking and selling other items like field tomatoes so these kind of go by the wayside and we'll pull those tomatoes out by labor day clean them out and start getting ready for the next season so we're losing you know a couple months on the on the back end as well so it's a short growing season for us we probably get somewhere between 15 to 20 pounds per plant that's enough for us to turn a decent profit but i, I will admit it is going to be tougher this year because propane costs have been astronomically high compared to the past um, we had that cold, cold last 10 days that really hurt us. We burned a lot of propane. You know, all the input costs, even boxes, uh, fertilizer, string and clips, seed, just everything that goes into producing greenhouse tomatoes has gotten more expensive. So we're going to have to start our tomato price off at a minimum of $3.50 a pound this year for it to be worthwhile. Uh, that seems kind of high especially when you can go to the grocery store and probably find them for a buck 99 or maybe 2.99 a pound at the highest for a greenhouse grown um, you know our price will come down once we start picking our field tomatoes and there's a glut of tomatoes on the market and demand kind of drops because everybody's picking their own tomatoes or every farmer at the market has their own tomatoes so you know we'll probably dip down to that 275 295 a pound area but for now we're going to stick with 350 at least i think that's where we started last year maybe drop to 325 once we get into late June and you start seeing some other tomatoes trickling into the farmer's markets from other growers that have them in high tunnels or you know covered structures where they can get early tomatoes. In Ohio, there's not a lot of field tomatoes till 
until the middle of August. So that benefits us greatly. We have really strong sales through May and June and most of July. All right, I got one more tub to go grab out of the greenhouse and then let's get these packed up and into the tomato cooler, which I don't even have to keep it cool. It's already cool enough at night to keep it in the 60s. We like to keep our tomatoes around 60, 65 degrees. They'll hold a little bit, little bit longer than letting them, you know, warm up during the day and then cool off during the night. That's not good for keeping tomatoes stored long term. We got to hold on to these tomatoes for almost two weeks. They will continue to ripen. So like uh, this light color one right here will be as dark as this red one probably by next week. And then a week after that, it'll be ripe and completely red and juicy, full of tomato flavor and ready to sell. All right, now that we have our three tubs of tomatoes in here that we've picked today, that I picked, I don't normally pick tomatoes. I've probably picked less than 10 tubs in the last decade. <laughs> They're just uh, ready on a day that I don't have employees here and it's hot and sunny out and we needed to get them out of the greenhouse. So, And I wanted to make a video about picking tomatoes. So the way we do this is we open a handful of boxes and we usually just try to divide them into two different sizes, maybe three different sizes, small, medium, large. And then we'll also have a tub for scratch and dent or secondhand tomatoes. You can see that one has a big blemish on the side. Um, if we get one, it's irregular shaped or it's been poked by a stem or something, or you know, one like this, we'll throw that into a second spin like this and take it to the farmer's market and sell them for half price. So we'll just set those ugly guys aside for now. And all we do is just, I reach in here and grab the big ones to stack in one of the boxes. Pretty fast, pretty simple. And then I'll grab these small and medium sized tomatoes and put them in a separate box. Doesn't take much to do it. Well, I just finished packing tomatoes from our very first pick of 2023. Granted, it was only 12 boxes, not a lot for us. It's not even enough to set up a decent display at one farmer's market. Come Memorial weekend, we're hoping to be at six locations, so we definitely need a couple hundred boxes stockpiled here over the next three weeks. But you know what? You gotta start somewhere. It feels good to finally be getting some ripe fruit to be coming out of the greenhouse because this time of year, our farm is bleeding financially and there's no way to stop the bleeding until we start making sales of our greenhouse tomatoes. So really looking forward to the beginning of the season come Memorial weekend. This is where we're gonna end today's video, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And we will see you again real soon down on the farm. Here we are a week later, and you can see how many red ripe tomatoes there are ready for picking. And it's like this in every row. We should have a really good pick tomorrow morning. I'm guessing 60 or 70 boxes. So this will be a good start getting ready for the big Memorial weekend in two weeks.